Hi, I'm Christian Schiller. Welcome to this hands-on video where I regularly take a look at a cool and interesting project that has caught my eye and see how far I can get with it. If you enjoy what you see here, then please subscribe, please leave a comment, even just a thumbs up will be most welcome. Or you can find more about all of the things I work on at chrischinchilla.com. What am I looking at in this video? I'm going to be looking at Serenity OS and its related browser project, Ladybird. I've always loved messing around with operating systems and desktop environments. I'm including here things like GNOME and KDE, which are not operating systems in themselves, but are kind of closely related. I think my first graphical operating system was probably Amiga OS or Workbench. I can never quite remember what part was what. And in the decade since, I've always enjoyed playing around with weird, wonderful, and normal operating systems. A lot of different versions of Windows, pretty much every version of Mac OS since I think version 7.5, maybe 8.1, I really can't remember now. Uh, I've tried all sorts of different Linux flavors, BSD, and a couple of other niche operating systems too. I often wonder if in maybe an alternative or a future life, I could have and would have liked to have created the sorts of fictional interfaces you see in movies and games. In fact, one of my favorite books is a book called Make It So, which looks at this very aspect and draws comparison between fictional interfaces in, in movies and in games and real interfaces and how they inspire each other. I first heard about Serenity OS via a news item on the Changelog podcast where they were talking about uh, Ladybird. Ladybird is a browser that is sort of part of Serenity OS or not quite yet. Um, and it's a new and unique browser engine, a new and unique take on browsers. And I've always been a little bit worried about the kind of impact on the web of this hegemony of the Chromium browser. I generally use Safari myself, which I know is not necessarily a great solution in itself, but uh, it's not Chrome. But in my mind, any new and original competitors in the browser engine space is welcome right now. Then as I was digging into Ladybird, I discovered that it was a browser designed for an entire and equally unique operating system called Serenity. And I was intrigued. And it's not, I have to clarify here, it is not a BSD or Linux skin. It is actually something built from scratch, from the ground up, that obviously draws paradigms and some, uh, some, some building blocks of classic and modern operating systems, but it is still very much its own thing. So in this video, I am going to be looking at building and running both Ladybird and Serenity OS on my M1 MacBook Pro. And I mentioned this because Serenity is actually designed to run on x86 systems and M1 MacBooks are obviously not x86 systems. So that introduced a few complexities, but nothing you can't get around and nothing, I'm pleased to say, there wasn't documentation and help on. So let's get stuck in. First Ladybird, it was initially built as an experiment and creating a browser with the Serenity OS HTML libraries, but then the team, the community around it, decided to grow it into a new cross-platform browser option. It uses Qt, which is a pretty well-known cross-platform UI library, but things never quite look completely native. They all sort of look similar and passable, but not perfectly native, but still it works fine. And here's how I got it running. So this is the Ladybird part of the project, just inside the Ladybird folder. This is the browser, which we'll have a look at first, being the most simple part. Um, you can see there are some build instructions here. I have checked it out, I've updated it. I have installed all the dependencies already, so this shouldn't be too slow. So let's jump in. I've checked this out here. And I should have all the dependencies installed already. But let's just be sure. And then build steps. Okay, so CMake. Yep, so this is updating from a version that I already had. Build. 
So that build took a little bit longer. There must have be a bunch of changes, but that's okay. And now we should be able to run. Now I know there's going to be a problem here. We'll see what it is in a second. It will work, but it's going to be a bit odd. Um, but I have a fix, which I'm going to try in a second. So here's the browser. It doesn't look particularly Mac OS native. That's fine. It's not necessarily expected to be yet. Let's open up my website. It's not particularly fully featured, but that's also fine. It's all early days. Yes, you can see the font is a bit off. Okay. Now, fortunately, the community is very active, and when I ask a question, I get answers quite quickly. So I have a thing to try here. So we need to find the P list. I think this means manually opening it up. So let's uh, quit that for now. Open up the folder. Is it inside the build Ladybird app? Uh, there. So you have to pop open the package contents, plist here. So I have to open up Xcode here. Everything gets a bit heavy now. And we find high resolution capable and we turn it off. Was it no or yeah? No then. Okay. All right. Quit that. And I guess we just open it up again. Hmm. And that sort of fixes things. <laughs> Still not quite there, but this is an early days project. A browser takes a long time to make, but it's getting there. It's nice to have an alternative, even if it is a little odd right now. Yeah, we can definitely see some weird issues coming through here. Let's maybe try a simpler website, ironically. Yeah, so that's a little better. Um, interestingly, it isn't switching to HTTPS by default, but that does work. We have very simple controls here. There is no kind of um, control click for inspector or anything like that, but it is up here. So you can do view source. You can do... JavaScript console, um, I think that's probably more like an interactive console, not one that shows you anything. Let's see, yep. Um, and also the inspector here, and that just crashed things. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're getting there. It's early days, but um, it's nice to see something different. So one last try up here. Try again. It's weird that it defaults to non-secure quite a lot. And you have a lot of debug here as well. Uh, how useful it will be to you in this current state, I'm not sure, but you can see a lot of uh, dev details that dumps out to the terminal there. Um, dump the DOM tree there, for example, etc., etc. So there's quite a lot you can do. So that's Ladybird. Next, let's look at Serenity OS itself. Building and running a browser is one thing. It's fairly complex, but nowhere near as complicated as an entire operating system and a lot of applications in user space as well. As I mentioned earlier, Serenity is designed for x86 64-bit systems. So this means that I am running it on my, I'm pointing down at it right now, my M1 Mac, I need to run it in emulation. Fortunately, because this is an entire operating system, and I think the, the developers assume that people are not necessarily going to be wiping their entire system and installing it on top of it, they have, uh, in the run scripts, designed it so it runs in Quemu. I don't really know how you pronounce that, but it's a pretty well-known virtualization and emulation tool. And when you use the run scripts, it creates that for you. I had to add a line, which you'll see in the video, to get it to work on Apple Silicon. And then after a lot of waiting... It worked. It's a little slow, a little sluggish, as you'll see, but it works. So we're building an entire operating system here. There's a few steps to jump through. Again, I have done all of these already. Um, I've fetched some changes, though, so the build times might take a little bit longer. Um, first, here's the setting up the dev development environment for macOS. I've done all of this already. You do need Xcode. 
I did try it without, it doesn't work. Um, install all of these dependencies, I have got them all installed already. And also setting up Fuse for file system, virtual file system stuff. This all was done already. I'm just going to do this stage again, though, because it might make a difference. And this does actually install, well, not this, but an earlier step installs um, a new option in the system preferences for this as well, um, which is interesting because I already have Mac Fuse installed and they're kind of doubling up a little bit, but um, it's fair enough. Uh, yeah, and it's trying to install it here. So I need to put in my password. There we go. So that's that bit done. Now we can get to the main build steps. Before we do that, I'm going to make show one change I made in the run file. Um, this was because I found it wouldn't work. So this is because um, we're trying to do a lot of uh, emulation here. And uh, on Apple Silicon, this is obviously a problem because it's emulation, not virtualization. It uses UTM under the hood, Serenity, to, to do the virtual machine. I'm actually working on an entire video about all of these options, including UTM. So some of these options looked vaguely familiar to me from that. So to get it to work, we need to explicitly set this machine default type. Um, I don't know why it's not set by default. I'm not sure if that would be a problem for other people, but for Apple Silicon, if you open up this run.sh file around line 265, add this in, it should fix things. It did last time I checked, let's see. But let's continue for now. So we've done all of this. Let's go back to the generic build steps now. So we'll rebuild the tool chain. And now the next step is this run, which is the relates to the script we customized. This also takes a fair bit of time. So here we go. Okay, now again, after a fairly long period of time, I want to scroll up through some of this, probably you have just as much as me, uh, here where things start to get interesting. You can see where the virtual machine starts to get created and mounted. And this is using UTM uh, behind the scenes as mentioned. Yeah, uh, it's around here. And this is basically the boot log. And this is the interesting thing because you get to a certain point where you think nothing's happened, but it has, it's here. Voila, we have an operating system running. <laughs> Pretty cool. Now this is uh, emulation. So it's gonna be a little unperformant, but it's not bad. And we can see there's definitely some Windows inspiration here. We have a terminal. I don't really know what to expect. Yeah, there we go. I guess there's gonna be a lot we can do that is pretty expected. Uh, and we can see each time we do something, the debug log is running there. We have a browser. I'm assuming that is Ladybird. We can open that up. You can see it's a little bit more realized here. Uh, I think it is Ladybird. It's not called Ladybird, but I guess it is. It's a little slow. So let's go to Google. Yep. And we have right clicks, which is cool. We have a text editor, all things you need, all created by the same team, which is kind of incredible in itself. Let's save it. Oh. Trying to use Mac keyboard shortcuts. <laughs> uh, it's very, if any of you ever had the fortune or misfortune, depending how you look at it, to have to play with early versions of Windows, this is very familiar. <laughs> there we go. We're even getting good old, yeah, look at that, markdown preview. It's a little slow, you probably can't quite tell, but I'm getting a little bit of lag. But as I say, this is emulation. It's also lagging my computer a little bit. Full on file browser here. There, again, very early versions of Windows-esque. And lurking on this little start menu, we have all sorts of other things. Games, I don't know if I'm game to open a game, but cat dog is, is too tempting not to. Let's try and really push things to the limit here. Oh, there we go. 
little cat running around. I don't know where the dog is. Maybe that comes in a minute. <laughs> I think it happens if I click it and move it around. There we go. Development. A whole bunch of different development things here. Pretty cool. Some more games. We could get uh, chess open. Why not? Maybe the cat will play chess with us. Uh, let's keep going. Yeah, there's chess. Ooh. PDF viewer, painter, uh, internet, email even, sound, a piano. This is probably not going to work. Well, you better hear it anyway. Uh, yeah. I oh, know it's keys. I don't know if I... No, I'm not hearing it. That's okay. That was possibly... Yeah, no climb. We can see a lot of error messages coming through in the background there. Um, themes, we could change, oops, change the theme. Yeah. It is uh, nearly Halloween. Let's go for pumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> and settings, lots of settings as well, probably. So, I'm not necessarily saying anyone's going to be using this in production, maybe. I don't know if the Serenity team are. Um, but it's pretty cool. I love the fact that someone has created an operating system that is not based on any other operating system is built from scratch. Granted, it's pretty old school looking, but it's cool, it works. I'm running it on a Mac, which is also pretty cool. Fair play, I love things like this. I love projects like this, passion project. They're working, I think, a couple of them full time on it. It works, <laughs> does the job. And I'm sure it probably runs very, very well on uh, lower end hardware as well. And I guess I could shut down, exit. And there you have it. With a few tweaks, a lot of downloading, a lot of waiting, you can run a completely new browser, completely new operating system. And whether you find those useful or not, I don't know. But the fact they exist, I love.